Yeah. Get some flags. Yeah, I'll take about half. At Stonewall National Monument, we don't want anyone thinking that just this one police raid happened and all of a sudden people were able to come out. There is a deeper history than that. I joined the Coast Guard in the year 2000. I knew that you weren't allowed to be openly gay in the military. Recruits can't be asked if they're gay, but they're expected to keep quiet if they are. Commanding officers can investigate if there's homosexual conduct on or off base 24 hours a day if there's evidence. Having to stay so deep in the closet under Don't Ask, Don't Tell was this, this very dark cloud. It was always kind of there, always kind of lingering, and I felt like I was making sacrifices for this country and loving this job, and it just was not loving me back. Hello, how are you all? Great, great. What's up? Good. Did you know this was a national monument? No, I'm not selling anything, I promise. I've always felt drawn to public service. Growing up on Air Force bases and in a military family, I was kind of born into it. When I had first joined the, the National Park Service, I wasn't comfortable being out on the job. Are you marching in a contingent? Yeah, we're in the plan, yeah. That's wonderful, we are too. But then I heard that this could become a monument and now I could possibly, maybe someday, get to work there and if I did, well what kind of LGBTQ ranger would go to Stonewall and not use a little bit of their personal story. My name's Jamie Adams, I'm a park ranger for Stonewall National Monument. I'm a third generation military veteran who served under Don't Ask, Don't Tell. I've been with the National Park Service for coming up on four years. I like the idea of being a storyteller. I like the idea of helping to preserve important resources for this, this country. I was lucky enough to, to get to travel overseas growing up, and so when I came home um, to the States, I felt like I could really see um, not just what, what we have that's so great about being here, but also s some ways that we could improve. And I've felt um, not just that I wanted to, to be a part of helping to improve that, but also I think I, could, I have something to offer. I feel like maybe getting here is, is a big part of that. I had been with the Park Service for I think less than a year when I started to hear the rumors that this could maybe become a national monument. I saw it in the news. I immediately felt like it was a pipe dream, but immediately started thinking, could I possibly get in on working there in any way. I just sent the superintendent a note saying, please know that you have someone here that is very enthusiastic. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? This is good. good. very good. We might have to do some real work. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Shirley McKinney, and I'm the park superintendent for nine national park sites here in Manhattan. Stonewall National Monument, of course, is the first LGBTQ site in the national park system. However, it is similar to the other national park sites in Manhattan because there's a civil rights aspect to the story of Stonewall. People are coming into the park and taking pictures like it's a photo booth. It's constant and the excitement about the new decorations. I think we ordered 1,500 of those flags just to make sure. Oh, this is a great picture, a great memory. Uh, it was the first pride parade that the National Park Service participated in. That's my sister. She was a park ranger also. She had ovarian cancer and she passed away about a year ago. Someone handed the flag to me and we had a good time waving it and everyone received us so warmly and we felt like rock stars. At Stonewall National Monument, our day-to-day -day operations consist of making sure, of course, the tangible resource, the park, is in good shape, but just as important, if not more importantly, is that the story is being preserved. We're present in the park as rangers to help the public understand why it was designated as a national monument. Hi guys, did you know this was a national monument? Yeah, this yeah. is so awesome. And then elaborate on that connection, whether it means listening to the visitor and what that means to them. I had a boyfriend. He snookered me into coming to Christopher Street, and I'm like really trepidatious. By the end of the block, I was like, oh my gosh holding hands with this boy I'm in love with. Or if it means talking about the broader history of this community. It's not uncommon to share tears with visitors, for visitors to just tell their story. I just came out, so. You did? Yeah. Well, welcome. This is really exciting. I'm, yeah. I'm so glad that you're here visiting. That's so special. What a special time.
in 2015 when I had first joined the, the National Park Service, I wasn't comfortable being out on the job. I didn't seem like something I needed to do and it wasn't something that I had really ever done before in any other job. That's a picture of me taken um, as like our official portrait that they do in boot camp and basic training for the Coast Guard. I was freshly 19 years old. I had not accepted who I was and my own identity um, when I joined. Growing up on Air Force bases and in a military family, with the don't ask, don't tell policy, it seemed to me that that carried over to the way that we lived. At times, our military family was closer than, than our you know, cousins and aunts and uncles that were all over. If that family would never even let me talk about it, could I ever just be myself? No, no way. I was stationed in, in Oregon on the Oregon coast initially, a place called Tillamook Bay. I was in search and rescue. So this is just coming back from being underway. I was all wet and I don't look very happy. When I was in the Coast Guard, I really felt like I was helping because we were actually running down piers, jumping on boats and getting out into the water to try to save people. Seeing this and especially seeing kind of the look on my face made me kind of wonder really what I was thinking, you know didn't look too, too happy in any of these. I knew that if I got caught even trying to talk to anybody about what was bothering me, I could lose my job, and maybe in a disgraceful way. And I really wanted to do a good job. I would try to convince myself and remind myself that my job was far more important than exploring that part of my life. If there were policies in place, not just in the military, not just in my job, but in religious organizations, if it's, if it's frowned upon, then it must not be right. So I must be wrong, but I needed to just make that go away, at least until I could get through, I don't know, the next 20 years in the Coast Guard. I was in the Coast Guard for just one enlistment, but I didn't complete it. I got out on a medical retirement early. So in, in the time after I was out of the Coast Guard, I wore a few different hats for the Department of Defense. One of them was working with applicants to the military, uh, all branches. Part of that initial packet where they would be reviewing what they were getting themselves into would be the, the form that was basically the bulleted information points on don't ask, don't tell. And I would have to give that form to these applicants and um, you know, they, it, it broke my heart. It broke my heart because for, for some of them, I, I, I just would wanna say really think hard about this. But really at that time, I still was dealing with a lot of my own um, you know, I was really still coming to terms with who I was, even still, even after all those years of getting out. I was out when Don't Ask, Don't Tell was repealed. I was, of course, way out of the Coast Guard. Coming out and being out, I guess, are kind of different, right? So I came out, but I didn't really live out, even in 2011, even really until 2015, until I started doing this kind of work. It didn't seem like long after that the folks in my family and People with, similar, with a similar school of thought began to change. It was as if ending the don't ask, don't tell policy kind of ended their intolerance. If I met someone who also served uh, under don't ask, don't tell and was in the closet because of it, I, I think we would just look at each other and say, can you believe we've gotten here? Because I, I still kind of can't believe it. I marched with our first contingent when the monument was designated in 2016. We've had a National Park Service contingent for Stonewall in each New York City Pride since. It's like nothing else in the world. I'm beyond grateful for getting to be in this position, getting to have these incredible interactions with people. I'm also just grateful that we've gotten here to where we have the site, even if I didn't get to work there, just to, just to have it as a national monument. Welcome to Stonewall National Monument! I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm very proud. Let's go, let's go, pick it up! Let me tell you, Smokey Bear, I am here to prevent forest fires with you. Work!